All right, happy Friday to you. We've made it to the weekend, almost. Time to get excited. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea. Let's track the tropics and talk about what's happening out there. And the good news is that it is still pretty quiet for us. We've had enough to deal with tropics wise this month. Of course, being hit by Category 1 Hurricane Barrel last Monday rolled right through the heart of Houston. That eye wall bringing 70 to 100 mile per hour winds to a big part of Houston and also over a foot of rain. So it's nice to get a break. Let's check out the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, the Atlantic, and you can see some flare ups as we check out our tropical satellite, especially in and around Mexico, Central America, northern portions of South America, over into parts of the Caribbean. We do have some disturbed weather, some areas of convection, showers and storms blowing up. But at this point, none of the activity over the Caribbean, the Gulf, the Atlantic expected to blossom or strengthen into a tropical depression, tropical storm, and certainly not a hurricane, at least not for the next seven days. So that is good news. We do have the potential, at least a low chance for maybe a tropical system forming in the eastern Pacific. That is going to be our only shot really for some tropical action over the next week. And even that is a low chance. This is where it would be happening. It would be a couple hundred miles south of southern Mexico and it is tracking off to the west northwest around 10 to 15 miles per hour so at this point over the next 48 hours there's nothing happening near zero percent shot for development over the next week about a 10 percent chance so this would be in the eastern pacific even if it did develop it would be moving away from the u.s and away from mexico and central america so i don't anticipate too many issues even if we do get a system developed from that but like I just said, here's the good news for us. No tropical cyclone activity expected for the next seven days for the Atlantic Basin. Of course, that includes the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. Many of you, and even me, who are still recuperating and trying to recover from the aftermath of a barrel, of course, that hit us last Monday. So we've still got a ways to go. Traffic lights across Houston still are not working in some areas. You still got probably cleanup to do in your yard with all of those trees and fences that were blown down. So it's nice that we are getting a break from the tropical action. We've had three named systems so far this hurricane season. Alberto, Barrel, of course, which hit us directly. And of course, Chris, which was a short-lived system that barreled into Mexico. But we've had impacts from Alberto and from Barrel, of course, which was a direct hit. Next name on the list would be Debbie, then Ernesto, Francine, and Gordon. We are hoping to hold off those tropical systems as long as possible. Definitely have the warmth out there. We are looking at our sea surface temperatures and they are well into the 80s for much of the Gulf of Mexico, even into the Caribbean, Western Atlantic, very warm water in place that would help to fuel any of these tropical systems that would develop. Here is the problem though, and our saving grace. The reason why we're not getting a lot of tropical activity right now. Typically this time of hurricane season, you do have that Saharan dust rolling off of the African coast and pushing over the Atlantic. And sometimes it makes it even into the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. So that's exactly what we have happening at this point. That's Saharan dust, of course, bringing in some very dry air and making it hard for these tropical systems to kind of build, develop, grow, and survive. So we may have a few tropical waves here and there that we've been tracking for parts of the Atlantic, Caribbean, and Gulf, but they're not really able to strengthen because they're not really in that environment that they need to thrive, where we have that low wind shear and that moist air out there and the very warm waters. We have the warm water, but the Saharan dust being pretty moderate to dense, definitely kind of stopping a lot of these systems from getting too strong. So that is great news for us. We don't need anything. We're still trying to recover from what Hurricane Barrel left for our area last week, and hopefully we will continue to get a break. However, the month of July is flying by and we are getting closer to the month of August, which is typically the more active period of hurricane season, usually August, especially September, and even the first couple weeks of October. 
So I do want to show you our map showing our formation zones for named storms for the month of August. And these are some of the areas that will have a higher probability or a higher likelihood to experience some tropical action, maybe a tropical wave that would blossom or develop into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane. So notice the Gulf of Mexico in the orange area. That means we are likely to maybe have a system developing right around the Gulf of Mexico. Check out the Western Atlantic just off of the east coast of the US, even more likely to have potential tropical systems popping up here and down across the central western part to the Atlantic, getting close to the Caribbean islands. That's the area that would be the most likely for tropical cyclone development during the month of August. So we've got a lot to watch, a lot to monitor just because there's a lull in the action right now. Don't let your guard down because as I mentioned, We've still got to get through the peak of hurricane season, which would be the next couple of months. That's typically where we do see those tropical cyclones ramp up across the Atlantic Basin. So still a lot to watch, a lot to track, but let's just be thankful that for right now and likely for the next week, things will remain quiet across the tropics for our area.